Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Sri Banerjee, core faculty for the College of Health Sciences and Public Policy at Walden University. And um, in this video, um, what I'll do is I'll um, first uh, show you a neat little uh, tool that uh, NASA has uh, built. Um, and that is the uh, NASA Worldview um, tool. Um, and what it allows you to do is um, it really allows you to um, kind of zoom in and see what is happening um, during various natural disasters. So um, let's get started. Um, first, what I'll do is I'll show you um, all of the different options uh, that are available um, within uh, this um, opening screen um, where you can either select the night lights from NASA's uh, black marble um, geostationary images. And this is really neat because um, every 10 minutes, uh, these are updated. Um, and then satellite detections of fire. Um, this is um, interesting, which you can actually um, create on your own, um, which I'll show you in a second um, by selecting the proper layers. So um, you can either directly go um, and look at this or um, select this out of a whole slew of whole um, list of um, optional layers that you have at your disposal. Um, you can, of course, discover and learn how to use Worldview. Um, and then Sentinel-2 is a, um, an important um, satellite, which is um, very, very high resolution imagery, um, which allows you to see a lot more. Um, there's clouds. Um, specifically, there's um, dust storms in um, Egypt, um, bushfires in Australia. Um, there's the tropical uh, cyclone, Hurricane Dorian. Um, and then you have a list of um, the Earth at night, uh, Pine Island campfires, um, Hurricane Florence, um, and then Hurricane Maria, which affected Puerto Rico. Um, a number of years ago, um, actually five years now. Um, so these are all the options. Um, you can go ahead and just, uh, you know, decide not to select um, anyone for now and just start using Worldview. Um, and then you have these options of layers, events, and data. And I'm going to start by um, looking at the events and um, showing you um, just so this is being um, recorded in May. So there's icebergs um, that are actually present. But what we'll be looking at um, actually is a hurricane and a volcano. Um, so let's take a look at all of the different. Um, and notice that this is saying cyclone. So um, as a rule of thumb, usually um, when there's a tropical depression, um, usually within the Atlantic, it's called a hurricane, um, whereas the same um, type of storm is called a cyclone um, with, within um, the Indian Ocean um, and, and um, various other Pacific areas. Um, So now we're going to switch gears and take a look at a uh, map that I created. And I'm going to kind of uh, backtrack you to um, how I found this information. Um, so um, if you look in the events tab and start there first, um, you can see tropical cyclone um, Halima. Um, and so this one uh, developed over a number of days, about seven or eight days. Um, and you can get a glimpse of what went on uh, during that time by creating this animated map. So right now, this animated map is actually um, not optimally uh, provide. It doesn't provide um, what we're looking for. So let's modify this a little bit. Um, and 
you can also loop this so that it um, when you hit play um, it will automatically keep changing um, so these are a couple of interesting features and then what what you want to do if you want to actually save this then you can share this map um, and then let me move over uh, my video but um, you, you can link this map um, with this shortened link um, and then post it and I'm gonna actually have a link and post um, at, at the conclusion of this video but um, then showing kind of um, how to better understand what is going on um, you can select some layers here um, and th these are there's some precipitation rate going on here um, which you can select or deselect um, and then also select some ways to visualize this but because this uh, particular cyclone is already visualized well um, there's really no need to um, try to show additional layers um, but that's an option that is available another um, neat option um, is being able to measure distance um, so you can kind of take a look at all of the um, points um, and then um, take a look at the square area and how um, how large the area is so then you can kind of uh, click off of it um, and, and measure um, so this is the area so the value that um, this gives you actually um, is in um, miles, um, uh, 1,605 miles. So that is the perimeter um, of, of this cyclone. But now instead, if you want to measure the area, um, then you can go back here um, and kind of measure the distances and um, then change it to area. Um, and right now, it's already selected in area, um, so that's why it's. Um, so this shows three points, um, and this is kind of half of um, the cyclone because I um, changed it over to half of it. Um, but if you want to change to the whole thing, then um, you would have to create another um, sort of area, but. Um, right now, this is at 53,279. What I want to show you here, uh, and I know I showed um, in the in the previous um, part um, ways to do perimeter and area, but I want to show you kind of how to do the area um, in a stepwise manner from 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 the beginning. Um, so if if we look here, um, there's uh, a, a ruler here. Um, and then you can select that. Um, and so instead of measure distance, which I showed you at first, um, you select measure area, make sure it's in miles. Um, and then now um, let's show um, how to do this in the correct way. So now you can kind of select around the perimeter um, and then create the third point. Um, and then create a fourth point um, and so the whole area is 58 roughly 58,253 square miles um, so there you have it um, and you have the measurement you can you can clear the measurement if you want if not um, you can kind of um, keep it in place um, and um, let it animate um, with that in place Great, so um, this is now saved. Um, now we'll switch to another um, map, which is a bit more complicated um, due to the complications in the ability to visualize um, fires. So this is um, another 
a global volcanism program where um, all of the um, volcanoes are tracked. Um, this is through um, volcano.si.edu. Um, so this has some interesting pictures of the most recent volcanoes. and um, So this is another website to uh, keep in mind. Um, another good one, um, before I show you the forest fire map, um, is disaster alerts. Um, and this is nice because you get to, um, for instance here, um, there's featured layers. So if you look under tree and then layers, um, then you have the option to do um, three, um, uh, you have the option to do uh, multiple layers. Um, and also there's three notifications. There's multiple notifications that come in during uh, real time. Uh, this is being updated um, very frequently. So for instance, um, there's a forest fire, a wildfire that's being updated um, five minutes ago. Um, and you can take a look, it's in Russia. Um, and then um, additionally, um, a another wildfire that's been updated eight minutes ago. Um, there's also some flood flooding being reported um, in the Northeastern United States. So as you can see, some of this information can really be useful um, when you're teaching um, and, and there may be um, certain delays um, in assignments. So I'm um, taking a look or even doing your own research in terms of the areas that may have been affected. So um, this is the National Weather Service having uh, reported a, a warning here. Um, and then of course, uh, there's an earthquake um, that was uh, 5.5 on the Richter scale uh, that was uh, 16 minutes ago. Um, and this was in the Virgin Islands. Um, and um, so there seems to be um, quite a bit of damage um, where it shows that uh, 86,000 people um, and 34,000 households um, were, were affected. Um, and that's a lot of people um, and a lot of, and so uh, 5 billion in US dollars of infrastructure um, may have been destroyed. Um, so, so this is um, very important, useful information that can provide um, a kind of an assessment of, of, of the damage from the natural disaster. Uh, so, so this is, um, I encourage you to look through this, uh, disasteralert.pdc.org slash disasteralert, which is one word. Then um, I'm going to show you now um, the third map uh, that I've created. Um, and this is in Portugal, um, some forest fires that took place in February. Um, so I'm going to show you kind of um, before and after pictures here and show you how to create them. Um, so here we go with the base layers. Um, and. And we can start comparison down here below um, under layers, not events, layers. Um, we can start comparison. And so there's multiple ways. My favorite really is um, swipe due to the reason that you can um, take a look between the 22nd and the 29th and how different the areas look. Um, so on the right hand side, what you have is the 22nd. Um, and let's take a look at Braga around 22nd. So everything's clear, you see. Um, and then let's take a look at and make sure the correct uh, bands are selected. So you want to make sure that your corrected reflectance is showing and um, you want to see that um, what is the damage that has been created and left behind from the forest fires, right? So in order to do so, you want to select a Terra Modis. Um, terra is land. And so make sure you select this and it's visible. So then I'll show you what happens. On the left hand side, you clearly see not only the location of the forest fires, um, but also the damage. So I, I, a couple of things I want you to make note of here. Um, 
And um, so in terms of uh, the forest fires, um, you, you see kind of a red area around it. And that would be the damage area. So what you can do is you can very easily assess the damage um, and, and the area of the damage um, by kind of measuring in the same way that um, I showed um, in the previous video. Uh, make sure it's in the right units um, and, and showing the right uh, aspect. So um, now you can kind of measure the area. Um, that was the perimeter. So the area is um, 7.62 kilometers squared, and then you can convert it to miles as well. But um, you can see the differences um, in this in, in in these areas, and um, unfortunately, there's a lot of forest fires in Braga, and there's a lot of um, loss um, in 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 forest habitat um, during, especially within the last seven or eight years. Um, so this is a good area to keep in mind. Um, another um, sort of interesting tool is opacity. Um, so what you can do is, as you're switching back uh, between the 22nd to gradually see how it's appearing on the 29th, um, the area that is affected um, starts to appear. So, so opacity is a good way to show before and after. Um, and then if you actually are interested um, in creating a, um, a moving GIF, um, that is also another option um, that you have um, that will just show a specific area. So now that you have a couple of options um, to show this animation, um, I wanted to show you another option that you have um, of how to create um, an animated or a moving GIF. Um, so let's get started here. What do you want to do first? If you're in comparison mode, um, you can, of course, do the swipe, which I showed you, and the opacity. And then there's this neat um, additional tool, which you can um, use to um, do something called spy. Um, and what that does is it shows you before and after. So the spy is before, um, and then you can quickly show. So this is before and then after. Um, if you want to do a direct comparison, honestly, then you can um, go ahead and do this as well. So this is a more direct comparison without the Terra uh, modus uh, between before and after. Okay, so this is, these are all good um, types of um, the tools that you have at your disposal. Now, let me show you something else. Uh, if we ex exit comparison and then go to animated uh, animate map. Now, let's take a look at this GIF, animated GIF that can be created. Um, take a look at this. So you can create GIF. And then you can kind of see um, how there's change over time. Um, you can change this. Um, and then show a longer period to, to sh kind of show um, what went on uh, with the forest fire. So let me change the date and show you a longer So a longer period so that the animation then is showing more. So let's see what appears now.
Let's take a look here. So you can kind of see the fire develop um, on the 26th, 27th, 28th, and then 29th. 29th you see the fire develop. Um, and then it's a short fire, so you, you don't really see too much. Um, but definitely the 27th through the 28th. Um, so you can download this um, and then actually display it um, and, and provide... Um, a description and, and use it uh, for your research. Um, then what you can do um, also is uh, save all of this and uh, provide this um, in an additional website. Um, so there you have it. Um, you have multiple ways to visualize um, natural disasters. Um, you have ways to track them and now um, you also have ways to display these um, so if you want to download any, any of this data, um, it's readily available um, and and you can download this data and then um, layer it onto um, any sort of data that you have available. So in environmental health research, um, there's sulfur dioxide, um, there's um, additional sort of emissions um, that you want to um, keep track of. Um, so. Uh, if, if you um, go through these steps, you'll be able to um, easily create a map uh, from NASA uh, data. Thank you for listening.